Hi there, Donovan Fondre here again with your Jumpstart Tips and Recipes. Everything that we show you on these programs is included in our book, Jumpstart Cooking. And this is really designed to do particular recipes for combination microwave and conventional, but with it you can take any of your favorite cookbooks, like here's one of our favorites, a Barefoot Contessa, and of course, dear old Julia, can't live without this one, but all of these recipes in these books can be done in one half the time or less, saving, well, more than half the energy that you would use if you used a conventional oven. So, with that in mind, always remember that what these tips are is designed for you to use them to make your kitchen activities much more efficient and to cook green, which means to save energy. And we should all be conscientious about that because it's becoming more and more precious and more expensive. Well, I thought today we would try something that a lot of people always look askance at me when I say, we're going to do a beef roast. Beef in the microwave? I would never do it. It gets tough. It dries out. Well, it can get tough and it can dry out. But remember, you are the cook, not the machine. So if it overcooks, it's your fault. I can overcook in the oven here, on top of the stove, on the charcoal grill, but it's me, it's not the machine. So let me show you this wonderful little, it's about a two and a half pound rump roast. Now if you can find rump roast, never fails. It's one of those things that it's just made for microwave. So what we're going to do, I have here a dish that has a little channel around the side, which is like a uh, grease trap. So all the juices and the fat will drain away in there. Now if you don't have this kind of a dish, you can use a roasting rack. Now you look at that and you say, oh, metal, you can't put metal in the microwave. Doesn't matter. As long as you have a load, meaning an amount of food or water that's absorbing the energy, you don't have to worry about metal and the problem that we have, which is arcing, which is a little spark, a bow of light that you see sometimes when you put metal in your microwave. So I'll use both of these just so you can see how they work. And I'm going to season it in this case with some Lowry's seasoning salt. And I like this, it's a blend of herbs and spices. It has paprika in it. So it adds a little bit of color to the roast. But remember, we are doing jump start. So after we microwave this, if we don't like the color, if it's not as dark as we want, or if it doesn't have the, the exterior surface that may be crispy and crunchy, we put it in our conventional oven or toaster oven or get your handy propane torch and <laughs> burn the outside of it. All right. Now you may have seen in our store, and I want you to look at our store every time you look at these shows, because we have some dandy products, and we try to pick out products that really help you, that are not gimmicks and gadgets, but really are useful. For example, number one is the instant read thermometer. This guy you can't live without, whether you're cooking on the out charcoal grill, in your conventional oven, your microwave, any way you're cooking. It tells you where you are in the cooking process, and it avoids such things as overcooking and drying out. Now this can spatter. And this easy sheet is a heat resistant Teflon coated piece of fabric. You can use it as I am here just to cover the roast because I want this to be a dry roasted, not a moist cooked roast. If I wanted to cook it moist, I'd put plastic wrap or a dish cover on top. Okay, you can also use these easy sheets as we call them in your skillets and uh, in your oven or any place at all that you don't want things to stick. In fact, this frying pan that I have used to be a non-stick. It is now no longer a non-stick. But when I put an easy sheet in there, I have revived it. Nothing ever sticks. It's beautiful. It's perfect. All right, a little over two pounds for this uh, little roast. Figure about, depending on how you like it, rare, medium rare, well done. Four minutes for rare, five minutes for, now this is per pound, for medium rare and six minutes for well done. Well, we don't want to cook a nice piece of meat well done. So we're going to give it four minutes, two and a half. Let's give this guy just located in the center of the dish. We'll do it for eight. No, I'm going to do it for 10 minutes. And now I'm going to reduce the power slightly to 70%. The reason is if I cook that on high power, the outside is going to get very done and the inside very raw because it doesn't have a chance to conduct the energy from the outside to the inside to cook it evenly. So when you cook slower, you have more uh, of a, a gradation between the well done and the raw that's more even. 
Same thing true in your conventional oven. If you were to do that roast at 500 degrees in this oven, you would burn the outside and the inside would probably be rare or raw by the time you took it out. So you lower the temperature and you cook it slower and then it cooks more evenly. Well, a nice side dish to this uh, beef roast would be a smashed potato. Now I microwaved this potato uh, prior to doing the roast because there's nothing too exciting about microwaving a potato. You throw it in there and turn on the oven and about four or five minutes and you have a potato that's done. You know, let me mention something about this. I get so many letters about people that say, Donovan, you know, I have so much trouble cooking the potatoes. They're not even. The one side might be a little raw. Well, turn them over once or turn them around. Now, most ovens turn the food so you don't have to worry about it. But even I, sometimes when I feel the potato when it comes out, it feels a little hard on the bottom or the top. So you just turn it over, give it another 30, 40 seconds, and it's just fine. Okay, now what I like to do is to take this and this potato, and I'm going to cut it in half, and I'm just going to smash it. I have a little olive oil in here. So I'm just going to smash it down like this, and we're going to set it on the burner on uh, high heat. And I want to brown and crisp that potato, which is such a delightful thing to have with a beautiful beef roast. Okay, now this is going to be cooking. That we've got uh, eight minutes or so. So when I come back, we'll reveal the roast, check it out, see how done it is, if it needs more cooking, or if it needs to be put in the conventional oven or toaster oven, and then we'll go on. And then we'll also have this beautiful smashed potato, brown and crispy and delicious, and that's what you're gonna be sampling today. We'll be right back. Well, we're back and the roast is almost done. Now, prior to the finish of this roast, I checked it out and found it wasn't where I wanted it to be in the cooking process, so I added a little more time. Remember, we started with eight minutes on 70%. I added six more minutes. And the reason is, it came out of the refrigerator, so it was colder than at room temperature. And that's another factor that you have to consider when you're cooking microwave. And you may say, well, golly, that's so complicated. If I have to think of all that, why don't I just cook it primitive style? Well, because this guy took us 15 minutes. And again, my non-stick sheet is already, all I have to do is wash it off. And you see that I placed my thermometer into the meat after I checked it the first time. So we have it right here at 120 degrees, which is rare. Now, I like that because on the sides, we're going to have medium in the center it's going to be rare so we can feed everybody what they want at the degree that they want their beef done okay now you should always leave this set for about uh, oh five or ten minutes to allow the juices to coagulate and stay within the roast but because this is television we're going to go ahead and serve it right now so you can see it now remember i left the thermometer even though it's metal in the microwave it doesn't matter it's just reading it instantly and telling me what the temperature is so i can serve it properly all right, my metal roast rack, we can take that out, clean it off. And notice how brown it got on the other side. Here's the fat side, look, nice and brown. But if you want, remember we're jump start cooking, so we start it in the microwave. If you want, put it in your toaster oven, your conventional oven for, oh, just a, a little bit. Just turn it on maybe two or three minutes at uh, 400 degrees, and it'll be much more brown than it is right here. All right, first of all, you recall, we did our smashed potatoes and here they are all i did microwave a potato smash it into a little bit of olive oil in a skillet and take a look at this there is like an oven brown potato and it is so tasty and so good you're going to love that all right now let's take a look at our beef roast see there we are it's actually medium and this rump i tell you is just naturally tender it is such a good cut of meat Okay, now we're getting into the medium rare, and let me show you the center, and this is where I like it. So I want to show you the center of the roast, and you can see the difference in the gradation. See, there it's rare on the inside, so we can have our selection of medium rare. For those folks who like it cooked that way, here's a nice chunk of well done there on the end there. My wife loves that, and we can taste off a couple more of the rare ones, and we can serve the entire group and give them the degree of doneness that they love. Now you can see also that when you microwave, there aren't many juices. So the juice stays in the food and makes it perfect. All right, that's your jump start beef roast, a rump roast. 
You can use sirloin tip, you can use standing rib, any of the tender cuts of meat cook beautifully like this. If you're going to cook the tougher cuts, then you've got to braise them in a liquid, just like you do on top of the stove, but do it in your microwave oven. And that's your jumpstart tip for today. Remember to check our store and all of our recipes are in our cookbook and they should be in our blogs. I'll get to that every day.